السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته I just wanted to see that I was audible. Sorry about the technical difficulties with the uh, with the nasiha. Um, but I think like Sister Nasirin said, she will send you a recording. Oh, it's a very important topic that Mullah Khalil was discussing. discussing. Even I think the section that you guys missed, I shared the audio of some of it, but um, it's a very important nasiha to listen to in light of discussions that are taking place in our community, etc. Very, very important. So please do listen to the nasiha afterwards, inshallah. Malana Zakriya? Yes. I have to interrupt you. What was the general nasiha about? The nasiha was about uh, truth. It was about salvation. And it was about knowing where your scope stops in relation to judgment. Or, or what are our standards of judgment? So through salvation and judgment, basically. Um, and I think the you most people will know where the discussion stems from. Um, some social media posts made by prominent people and some back and forth, etc. Discussing what, what is the... Uh, basically the idea that where do we take our yardstick of what's good and bad, what makes someone virtuous, not virtuous, etc. from. Um, and then what, once we, we, we have, we know that yardstick to be the Quran and the Sunnah and the, uh, the Islamic tradition, well, what do we do with that information? Do we go about saying that people will be in heaven, people will be in hell, or, uh, or do we rather use that information of a person engaging in good action to make dua for them to um, etc and even if the person doesn't accept the message how do we interact with him how do we be builders in society etc so it's, a, it's an important discussion to be had and in light of the other discussions that Mullah Khalil has been having with you like often myself Mullah Khalil and uh, you know Mullah Muhammad and another friend of ours we very often get together Actually, like we try and make it weekly, get together to brainstorm these issues, and, uh, you know, discuss these issues because this is one of the major, major uh, challenges of our time. That is that uh, that is that people are moving away from the Quran and Sunnah as a fundamental and foundational text for shaping how we see the world. Uh, what Muslim people are doing. Inadvertently, most of the time, I mean, they are, nobody doubts that they are committed Muslims who love their faith, love Islam, etc. But what they're doing is they're cutting themselves off from the tradition of Islam, from the traditional sources of Islam. And then what you have is people nitpicking, uh, not just nitpicking, yes, on, on, in relation to the tradition or what they think is wrong, but also cherry picking verses from the Quran. Uh, to basically justify a worldview that's not actually born from Islam. And people can do that with capitalism, people can do that with communism, people can do that with um, humanism, people can do that with all of these different isms. If you want to justify any one of those isms, you can simply go cherry pick a verse from the Quran or a particular hadith to support that. But when you look at all of the sources of Islam in light of each other as the tradition of Islamic scholarship has done. I don't mean the I don't mean the you know the imams that were in in, in the Cape before. No, no, I mean the more than fourteen hundred year tradition of Islamic scholarship throughout the golden ages of Islam, and you know when uh, you know encompassing the greatest intellectuals of the Islamic tradition. That's what I'm speaking about when you when you forego all of that inherited wisdom and understanding, then it's easy to fall prey to all of these other isms and to misinterpret the Quran according to one's own biases. Um, and, and that's essentially what the, the nasa'ih or the various advice that Mawlana Khalil has been giving for a period of time uh, is focusing on. Because that's what, like I said, what we find, I mean, in our discussions amongst uh, ourselves, 
what we find to be one of the greatest challenges for uh, for for people. Um, you know, oftentimes when we measure or assess problems, then we think the greatest problem, the greatest problems are the material ones. People don't have food. There's injustice in terms of this inequality. Um, people don't have access to uh, services, etc. All of those are very, very bad. Certainly, there are problems, and there are problems that we must work to remove from society. But oftentimes, the solutions that people present when cut off from the divine guidance are solutions that actually exacerbate the problem rather than solve the problem. Um, and uh, and that's why we need to turn back to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to turn back to implementing Islamic solutions to things. Not just you know, taking the Quran and the Sunnah as it is, not trying to fit them into uh, what we want or the solutions that other people are presenting from worldviews outside of Islam and then just trying to coat them with a verse to, uh, to justify them. No, Islam has its own intellectual tradition. Islam has its own mechanisms of presenting solutions. Islam has its own uh, uh, epistemologies, philosophical outlooks, etc. And we must appreciate them, learn about them, and implement them. And that's how we as Muslims, as an ummah, will contribute to the world rather than just toe the line with people who don't actually know where they're going. Um, so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us and, uh, you know, make us up to the task. May Allah make us up to the task. Uh, of, of you know of accessing that tradition and implementing it as well um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a it's a difficult thing I mean all of us like I saw myself Mala Muhammad Mala, uh, Mala Khalil uh, and uh, a few other colleagues and friends of ours um, who, engage, who engage these topics quite often we, we see that it's a, it's a, it's a monumental effort um, in terms of just simply accessing, finding the time to read, you know, you're lazy and uh, you must do other stuff also, but finding the time to read about these things and uh, learning about it and accessing that, that wisdom and then, you know, conveying it to uh, our students in classes, etc. But also making that narrative apparent in the world because the, the world is, is replete with uh, representations of Islam that's not actually true to true to the tradition. You have people that are extremely conservative and make thing, everything haram. Um, when it shouldn't be. Then you have people who are making everything halal, which shouldn't be. And oftentimes, both of those groups of people, they have superficial understandings of Islam. Um, and so, what we're trying to do is take from our teachers the... Um, the correct understanding as it was as Islam was understood throughout its tradition uh, and normalizing that in society rather than rather than uh, allowing either extremist liberal understandings or extremist conservative understandings of Islam to, uh, to flourish because that will essentially extremes are not beneficial in general we strive for the middle way may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us the people of the middle way and let ours be a caravan of, of hope that people can uh, journey with positivity and optimism towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah, so, okay, that's just way off topic. But anyways, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. Let's get into our man kasr al-asnam, inshallah. I hope that answers your question. But you must go listen to Mullah Khalil's nasiha as well. Shukran, Mullah. Sorry to derail class. <laughs> no problem. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل عقدة من لسان يفقه قولي اللهم أخرجنا من ظلمات الوهم وأكرمنا بنور الفهم وافتح علينا بمعرفة العلم وسهل أخلاقنا بالحلم وجعلنا مما يستمعون القول فيتبعون أحسنه اللهم اجعل أعمالنا خالصة لوجهك ولا تجعل فيها حظا لغيرك وصل اللهم على سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين والحمد لله رب العالمين. السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته once again. Before we start our class, من كسر الاصنام, our reader class, بإذن الله تعالى. We just um, 
recap on some of this work and uh, and then we will move on bi idnillah ta'ala to our uh, tafsir section where we do or rather our tarjuma section where we do surah al-halaq um continue where we left off over the inshallah so um just remind me quickly in class last week you guys did uh this page right biru zamzam yes man in group work right okay and then for homework you had till the end of the next page so we will just go through this whole chapter with me later you can read with me and then we'll take it from there bismillah rahman rahim biru zamzam biru zamzam the well of zamzam what kind of construction is that Brilliant, mashallah. That's correct. You can see bi'ir is a light word. No, uh, there's no al, no tanween. And zam, zama, that's just a funny word. It's, it's in jar, it's in halatul jar. But this is one of those words that uh, the endings, it goes, it, it will look normal in a rough and in nasb. But in jar, it doesn't go, it doesn't get a kasra. And it never has a tanween. So bi'ru zam, zama. The well of Zamzam. It's a name of you all know what Zamzam is. وعطش إسماعيل مرة وأرادت أمه أن تسقيه ماء. وعطش إسماعيل مرة. Once Ismail became thirsty, وأرادت أمه أن تسقيه ماء, and his mother wanted to. Uh, Give him water to drink. If anybody has questions about your translations or any questions about the sentences, don't hesitate to ask, right? So once Ibrahim, uh, Ismail became thirsty and his mother wanted to give him water to drink. But where? was the water, whilst Mecca did not have in it any well, or there was no well in it. And Mecca did not have in it any river. Uh, just on the, the, the previous sentence, um, any. Why why did you say any? Because if you say, or If I translate it literally, it will say, and Mecca, there is not in it a river or a well. Okay. So a simple way of translating that would be, there is no well in it. Or there yes. isn't any well in it. Yes. Because yeah, I was looking for the for the for the shay in and I couldn't yeah because it, it makes sense to have any uh, any in it but uh, okay no more okay. okay let me explain to you why because you see the word birun is nakira you see that indefinite yes ma'am right and you see the word nahrun is also indefinite nakira nahrun I will I if I negate if I negate a definite, if I negate a definite, then I'm only negating one thing. If I negate an indefinite, this is like a, just a general thing. There may be exceptions to this, right? If I negate a, a, an indefinite, then I'm negating all. For example, if I say there is not or the man is not in it, and I'm only negating one man. If I say there is not in it a man, then I'm actually negating all men. So I would say there isn't any men in it. So, so that's I'm basically applying that applying that principle. When you negate an indefinite, then it's negating all. When you negate a definite, then it's you're only negating one. So, so can we create a rule? Saying. Can we create a rule then to say that uh, if it's, it's not, indefinite, it's you can include a, any? Yeah, it's not a Lugawi rule, it's, it's mm. a more uh, a rational rule, but yeah, you can. Okay, you can. 
ومكه ليس فيها بئر ومكه ليس فيها نهر and Mecca did not have in it any well nor any river. Well, I must to interrupt them. I had a question about the word Laysa. I know we've, we we went over it last week, but could you please just revise it? I wasn't paying attention. Maf. Okay, just Laysa means not. Okay, just not. It just negates it. Uh, it, it negates, yeah. It negates the sentence. It's yeah. like... It's... It's like the negative form of kind, if you want. Okay. Right? Ne negative form of kana. It works like kana as well. Um, did, did you learn about kana? How kana affects a sentence? Yeah, I think kana it was. So it puts the whole sentence into past continuous tense, correct? Okay. And how does it does you know how it affects the nahu? Um, no, Maulana. Okay. Then don't worry about that for now. But just know that Laysa works the same like kana. We'll get to that in due time. Okay, cool. Shukran. Have fun. What is Kana again? Sorry, man. Kana. What does it mean again? Kana means was. You see at the beginning of the sentence, this is a feminine form of Kana. Yeah, okay. we had it also before. Okay, shukran. It makes shukran. sentence passes, right? Okay. Wakanet hajaru tatlubul maa. وتجري من الصفاء إلى المروة. Now, uh, you just asked what what kana was. Now it's important again. Kana makes the sentence into the past tense was. It changes it from is. Usually between the mubtala and the khabar, I assume it is right. Like if I say, الرجل طويل. الرجل طويل. What does that mean? The boy is tall. Oh, the man is tall. Man, right? The man is tall. Is tall. There's no word is, but I assume that between the mutra and the khabar. Right? So, with kana, it makes me change that is to a was. Kana rajulu tawilan. Will mean the man was tall. So, it makes it past tense. We know that already. We've come across that before. But what happens when that past tense is followed by a present tense verb? Tatlubu. We came across this also. I'm just jogging your memory. It makes it past but continuous. continuous. Mm. Past but continuous. So we oftentimes translate that as used to if we can, but it's not always going to work in every context. So let's see. It doesn't really work so much here. Let's see. وَكَانَتْ هَاجَرُ تَطْلُبُ الْمَاءَ And Hajar was seeking water. Oh, yeah. She sought but continuously. تَطْلُبُ طَلَبَ يَطْلُبُ means to request or to look for something. وَكَانَتْ هَاجَرُ تَطْلُبُ الْمَاءَ وَتَجْرِي جَرَى يَجْرِي means to, to run. And she was running min al safa ila al marwa from safa to marwa. Referring to the two hills. Yes. Why is it uh, ma'a? Why is it al ma'a in this sentence? Uh, the water. Why? Um, because it, it just refers to the oh, ma is not like a thing that we. Um, we quantify it. She was just seeking water. It's like a a category. Well, okay, because I, I suppose in the first the in. first sentence it was just ma'a. Sometimes I see it's ma'a. Sometimes I see it's al ma'a. Yeah, it, it could have worked the other way as well. Okay, it has to. Yeah. Because Munani can actually even be better. Man, in, that actually con be better. in this context, it almost seems like she's searching for a specific yeah. water. No, no, no. I, so, so I think a man would actually have been better as well. Okay. Right. So she says, Hajar was seeking water and running 
she and she was running from Safa to Marwa. Wamin al Marwati ila Safa and from Marwa to Safa. So she was running from Safa to Marwa and Marwa to Safa. Ran back and forth. Wa nasara Allahu hajara wa nasara Ismaila fa khalaqa lahuma ma'an. Okay, what does that mean? Wa nasara Allahu hajara. Basic sentence, that's why I want you, a basic uh, verbal sentence, that's why I want you to tell me what does it mean. And, and Allah helped Allah Hajar. Allah helped Hajar. Wa nasara Ismaila and? Helped Ismaila. Who? And Allah he, helped Ismaila. He helped. He helped. Right, good. And he, Allah helped Ismail. good. Fa khalaqa lahuma ma'an. So he created lahuma for the two of them ma'an water. وخرج الماء من الأرض وشرب إسماعيل وشربت هاجر وخرج الماء من الأرض and the water exited من الأرض from the earth or you can say the the water came out of the earth or gushed forth from the earth but yeah the, the meaning doesn't actually have gush خرج just means to come out to exit so وخرج الماء من الأرض the water came out of the earth وشرب إسماعيل وشربت هاجر and Ismail drank and Hajar drank is that correct? yes Malana good look at this Malana. sentence I just want to ask you something clear before you ask me look at this sentence نصر إسماعيل شرب إسماعيل yeah we said it was he helped Ismail yeah we say Ismail drank what's the difference? The in the act. top one, Isma Ismail is a maf'ul on bihi, no? Uh, correct. And in the bottom one, Ismail is the fa'il. How do we see the small difference? The one has a ah, the other one has a u. Okay. Mulana, I have a question, please. Um, so, so in these last two sentences, um, I see that the, the verb is repeated twice for each of the, the isms, Hajar and Ismail. Um, so, uh, is is it uh, is it a common way that is written in Arabic, or could it have been? Because in English you'd have said and Ismail drank, Ismail and Hajar drank. Is it is it just because of the way that we, we the sentence is written? You could say you, you could say it the same. Okay. 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 Uh, okay. You, you 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 could say that. Um, yeah, I think it's to emphasize that. Look, this book was written for people to learn Arabic from. So it repeats constructs, etc., so that you become accustomed to them. So look, here you see Ismail is masculine, so we use the masculine verb. Hajar is feminine, so we use the feminine verb. Even though Hajar is a masculine looking word, but it's, um, but it's a female name. So if you remember from your Nahu, you would have learned the, these three types of, uh, or these four classes of feminine words. Ones that have a sign, ones that are um, ones that are deemed feminine, ones that are dual body parts, ones that are uh, have female meanings. So here we are, okay, here's a word of the female meaning, Hajar. Now let's ensure that I'm using the female verb with it. Okay, I see. So it's it's intentionally done like that. I thought maybe in Arabic they write it out like that for specific reason. Okay. Yeah, so so so. Uh, a lot of the, the decisions of word choices and stuff in this book specifically is to accustom you to those things that you're learning in uh, in Nahu. Well, Lana, I just have a question on the word used for, for drink, um, Sharaba. And I see, the, I, I remember previously there was another word used for it. I can't remember. It could be Sakata. 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 Why is it just Sakata? So, so, why is it why, why is there a difference is does it mean does it mean okay. something yes it means something different shariba means to drink the water uh -huh. means to give someone water to quench someone's thirst or to give them water oh okay okay you'll see um like i'm not sure exactly which chapter but if you go back to them you you'll see that difference Shariba means to, to take in the water yourself, to drink the water, liquid yourself. Saqa yaski means to give the water to someone else to drink. 
or like, or if I use it for myself, then it will mean I quenched my thirst. I gave myself water. Saqa means to give a drink. Shariba means to actually take the drink and, 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 and drink. وَبَقِيَ الْمَاءُ فَكَانَ بِئْرَ زَمْزَمَ وَبَقِيَ الْمَاءُ The water remained. فَكَانَ بِئْرَ زَمْزَمَ So it was the well of Zamzam. فَبَارَكَ اللَّهُ فِي زَمْزَمَ وَهَذِهِ هِيَ الْبِئْرُ الَّتِي يَشْرَبُ مِنْهَا النَّاسُ فِي الْحَجِّ Oh, may Allah take us. Amen. Fabarak Allahu fi zamzam. Allah blessed in zamzam. Well, Allah basically, Allah blessed zamzam. But when you want to say Allah blessed something, Allah put blessings in a thing, then you use it with a harf fi. That's why, you know, when you want to congratulate someone or something, you tell him, Barak Allahu fiq. May Allah place blessings in you. Or in other words, we just translate it in English as may Allah bless you. If you had so Allah's blessing was in Zamzam, is it is it is it fine or is it it must but must it be Allah bless Zamzam? It, it must be you see why you would say Allah blessed Zamzam is because it's a verb with a fa'il. When you say Allah's blessings were in Zamzam, it's not necessarily saying that Allah put the blessings in. You understand? There's an element of, of activity in it. You have an active okay. verb, so this must yes. be somebody doing the action. Yes. فَبَارَكَ اللَّهُ فِي زَمْزَمِ So Allah blessed Zamzam. وَهَذِهِ هِيَ الْبِئْرُ الَّتِي يَشْرَبُ مِنْهَا النَّاسُ فِي الْحَجِّ And this is the well which people drink from during Hajj or in Hajj. وَيَأْتُونَ بِمَاءِ زَمْزَمَ إِلَىٰ بَلَدِهِمْ وَيَأْتُونَ بِمَاءَ أو بِمَاءِ زَمْزَمَ إِلَىٰ بَلَدِهِمْ And they come or they bring the water of Zamzam to their countries. To their country. هَلْ شَرِبْتَ مَاءَ زَمْزَم Have you drank the water of Zamzam. Well, then I have a question on the second word of line number nine. Tuna, so and they bring bima'i. That b, how did you translate that? Okay. What you first thing is, what did you translate ya'tuna as you translated it as bring? Yes. Ya'atuna doesn't mean to bring. Ya'atuna means to come. Okay. Only when it only when it's used with this harf b. Oh, yeah. When what would one what would be the mafoon and bihi has a b on it. Only then you translate it as b as bring. Okay. So you can translate it as and they come with the water of Zamzam to their country. If you want to do it literally, you can say they come with. And then you then you see what you're translating the bar as. But usually, when the verb ata yati is followed by the harf b on its maf'ul, then, it, then the meaning changes from to come, to come with. A better way of saying it would be to just translate it as to bring. Okay, cool. Right? Okay, shukran malana. Yeah. So if I Thank translate you. it as bring, then I don't translate the bar. Because then I'm understanding that the ba over there just affected how I translate the word atta. You understand that? Yes, Malana, that makes sense. Shukran. I, I think Malana did explain this at some point. I, I think yes, I've forgotten. Shukran. وَيَأْتُونَ بِمَا إِزَمْزَمَ إِلَىٰ بَلَدِهِمْ هَلْ شَرِبْتَ مَا أَزَمْزَمْ Have you drank? Okay. Let's get into our groups for like seven minutes, inshallah six minutes or so and let's just try and do the first three lines you know what to do get into your groups read translate and discuss constructions right what seven minutes or so inshallah bismillah
Sesini söyleyeyim. 